Hey everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to the channel. I do a lot of videos on cybersecurity, IT, career and education things. And today's video is just going to be a continuation of the cybersecurity interview series. But before we get started, if you've been enjoying these kind of interview questions or just my channel in general, uh, if you could like and consider subscribing, that would help me a lot. Uh, but anyway, getting on to the interview questions. The next question we have is, it is important to understand not just our vulnerabilities, but the risks of the organization so that we can best set priorities. Describe how you perform a security risk assessment, include the steps you might take, who you might involve, and how you would decide on the mitigation efforts to recommend. So this question can be pretty difficult to answer, and it also depends on like the type of organization you're working at, whether it's like a private sector or you're working like a, a government entity where kind of like their priorities are like kind of different. But I'm just going to answer it as if I was interviewing at some kind of private sector job. Basically, what I would do to perform a security risk assessment at the organ organization is I would kind of identify the, the critical assets within the organization like maybe that might be the department or departments that make a lot of money or the data that we use to make a lot of money like what what the organization used to use us to get its, to get its revenue from and like what it uses to kind of stay alive so once I identified the critical resources whether it's like humans or a process or data I would kind of do a risk assessment against it like maybe I would use like the the NIST framework for a risk assessment or I would take that infrastructure and kind of me like measure it up against NIST 853 or the CIS controls and kind of identify any gaps that might be there. So for example, uh, maybe it's missing like a lot of I IAM controls or maybe there's like no vulnerability management in place or maybe there's no asset management in place. I would kind of look at the current state of the infrastructure or the system or whatever it is that I'm looking at. I look at the current state of it and compare it up against a common framework and kind of identify the gaps. And then in terms of um, prioritizing mitigations, I would kind of look at the gaps that were identified, measure the risk against those, that is kind of identify the impact of the of the risks that were discovered, as well as like how likely those things are to occur. And I would kind of take the things with like higher risk and kind of prioritize those to try to mitigate those first and just kind of work my way down in terms of how risky like the findings are and as far as the people who i would involve in this process would be like the major stakeholders for the departments that in question so for example if we identified a lot of gaps like security holes like in the the sales department or for example the the infrastructure housing our data that we use to make money i would kind of involve those individuals in those departments as well as the individuals who would be doing the the mitigating so for example uh, sales for instance say maybe the sales team the technology they use needs to be like overhauled because it's full of security holes i would involve the sales team like the upper management of the sales team so they kind of know what's happening and know what needs to be done as well as the for example like prod operations or operation security like the people who would be actually working on mitigating and remediating those findings so this question is like pretty difficult um it's like a, a ginormous it's a question that requires like a ginormous answer. Like, how would you perform a risk assessment on our, on our organization? Um, I probably could have answered it more smoothly, but basically, basically the high level kind of idea is like identify the, the critical areas that need to be protected right like see what's wrong with the areas like see where the areas are at like right now like what you have in place and then kind of look at what the ideal situation is and then attempt to, to bridge that gap and then when you're prioritizing things that you need to do to bridge the gap you just kind of look at the the, the gaps or the holes that are in place and kind of see which holes are the biggest uh, in terms of risk that is like which ones have the most impact and are most likely to be um, most likely to happen essentially and then you want to kind of prioritize those first and the people who you rope in it like largely depends on the organization like that you're interviewing at but usually you want to you want to bring in like the stakeholders for like the actual areas that have gaps so they they know what's happening right with their department maybe um maybe you identified like a lot of gaps in the sales like that what the sales team is using for their technology so of course you want to bring in the sales team because they're about to have their stuff like remediated or like overhauled and you want to bring like in production operations as well because they're the ones that are going to be doing like the fixing so just bring in like the the relevant stakeholders who might you know who, who might be affected by the remediation effort yeah there's a lot of different ways that you can answer this like if you want to get like really rigorous um i forget which publication it is but nist has a publication for uh, a risk assessment so you could maybe like read up on that um but yeah it's a hard question um it's a good one to think about and practice answering because this is like a, a real question that I was I was asked uh, in one of my interviews. Uh, so yeah, this one's pretty good.
And the next question is, what methodology would you use to measure risk? Uh, so basically to measure risks, once you've identified all the risks in an organization or a system or wherever it is you're identifying the risks, you kind of list them all out and then have a have one column for like, if this risk were to happen, like what is the impact of it? It's like high impact, medium impact, low impact. In the second column, you would put like how likely it is for that risk to be realized is it like very likely to happen moderately likely to happen or like not very likely to happen and then you kind of go through and you calculate risk for each one of the line items by essentially like multiplying the impact times the likelihood so for example if something is very high impact and very likely to happen it's going to have like a very high risk rating and if something for example is very high impact but has like a zero chance of happening it has zero risk impact because even though you know the impact is high if there's a zero chance of it happening it means the risk is going to be zero essentially and you can kind of like look at it in a kind of a matrix style and you can kind of see maybe something is like low likelihood low impact low risk or something is like very high impact but low likelihood to happen maybe you can consider that like a medium level risk so this is pretty much the only way I know how to answer this question. Um, I think that's this is like a right answer. Maybe there's like other answers that are good too, but I would consider this the right answer. Just be aware of like, um, you know, the risk matrix and be like really familiar with it. And because a lot of people I, I feel like most or all people use this to to quantify risk. And the next question is, please give an example of a situation where you had to accomplish a task that required coordination across multiple stakeholders and possibly difficult stakeholders with diverse backgrounds. So there's a lot of ways to answer this as always, um, but I'm going to answer in a way that um, as if I never worked in a position that required me to do this, if that makes sense. So. For example, if you're new to security or you're new to like these kind of mid mid to high career like positions, you still need like a way to answer this question. So I'm gonna kind of answer it in a way that like anybody, technically anybody could. So an example of where I had to accomplish a task that required me to work with a lot of di different stakeholders would be, the task would be like delivering content on, on YouTube, right? Because my stakeholders might be, there might be like many groups of stakeholders, right? Like the one group would be kind of the masses, like the masses who watch my video in which I kind of learn what they want from the analytics. And then another group of stakeholders might be like my kind of core user group who follows me socially, who like answer my polls and stuff where I can, I can get information by like directly interacting with them via like posts and polls and stuff. And I guess you can even say like a third stakeholder would be myself, like the type of content that, that I enjoy creating, that I, actually want to create because the content from these three groups might be like all kind of different things if that makes sense so for me um the way i kind of accomplish the task that is like delivering content is i i try to compromise between the the masses like who i get information from the analytics and compromise between the kind of core user group i i kind of try to make content that kind of caters to both of those groups and i i make it like i lean a little bit on the larger group so i i pay attention for the most part i pay attention to like the the analytics like the youtube analytics and try to create content that caters to that kind of directly maybe like 75 percent of my content caters to the analytic and then maybe the, the remaining 25 percent or so will cater to like my kind of core user group or people who make like specific recommendations uh for content to make because most of my users uh, most of my viewers you know come from the masses like the youtube analytics engine so of course most of my content will be catered toward them but i try to like compromise and, and target both groups this answer might seem like a little bit weird because it's not really related to security but this question if you look at the question it's not really related to security either it's just kind of asking um how you deal with different people with different backgrounds and like the types of the decisions that you make because if you haven't like if you haven't worked in one of those positions before it's like pretty much impossible to answer this question so you can always like kind of manufacture you can anticipate the question and kind of manufacture a scenario where you'd be able to at least speak to it a little bit. So for me, like if I had never worked in security, like maybe I would say some, you know, something like I did, like about my my YouTube channel where I have to deal with like many, like a diverse group of people who kind of want different things um, where the, the task I had to accomplish would be like to deliver, you know, deliver con good content to my audience, something like this. Seems kind of weird, but it's kind of better to answer this, something like this than just be like, oh, I haven't worked in that kind of position before because that's like kind of gives you zero points or maybe my answer gives you like half points or something. It's not exact, but I ho hope that makes sense. Um, my answer is like not that good, but this is kind of a, a question you should think about and 
kind of be prepared to answer or like kind of similar questions, kind of like that behavioral type question. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, these questions in the series. Uh, I, as always, if I messed up or you have like other suggestions of how I could answer something better, just let me know in the comment section. I respond to everybody's comments. If you know, I made an error and you call it out, I'll, I'll probably pin it. Uh, but yeah, if you enjoy these, um, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it a lot. I've been doing some mentoring a little bit. I put some mentoring links in the description. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check it out. Otherwise, just leave me a comment. I'll respond 100% of the time and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.